Let's talk about markers. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here, also known as Caution Artists at Play because I love to play with different art supplies. If you've been around for a while, then you know I'm a mixed media baby. I like to try all the supplies that I can get my little hands on. And so over the years, over the many years that I have been an artist, because yes, I'm old, I have accumulated a lot of supplies. And so recently I started a series where I have been showing you those supplies. So far, we have gone through the journey of looking at all my colored pencils and water soluble pencils. I have also shown you my pastel collection and now we are moving on to markers. Now, admittedly, this is not an area where I have as many supplies. I have only recently in the past few years started really getting into marker artwork. So this one is probably not gonna be as long as the other two videos, I hope, but I do have a variety. So I'm gonna show you some fine liners and some alcohol-based markers, some water-based markers, acrylic markers, and I kind of just have a mod podge of brands here. We're gonna go through it all today. We're gonna check them out and we're gonna have a good time. So let's get to it. Okay, so starting off with my fine liners, I get a lot of questions about the cases that I use. These are the cases that I use. I think I bought these from Jerry's Artorama years ago. I can't find them anymore. So if anybody knows where we could find these cases, let us know because they are perfect for holding the markers. So let's talk about the fine liners that I have on hand. And again, just like in my other videos, I'm not gonna go through and show you every single color from every single marker line I have. Ain't nobody got time for that. We're just here to look at the goods and have a good time and not be here all day. But let's just get to it. I have here, of course, the classic Pigma Micron pens. I have a variety of sizes here. If you do any fine lining, I'm sure you've heard about these. They have the archival ink. They are, I believe these ones are waterproof, which is fantastic if you like to work in mixed media and you like to use watercolors with your pens. Again, they come in a variety of sizes. This is the graphic one. So this one's a little bit thicker and they have a brush one. But they also have really, really tiny sizes too. Look at this itty bitty one. Very, very classic. I went through a phase, like when I was in school, <laughs> this was like the main art supply that they had us buying besides charcoal and graphite. And I went through a phase where I hated these for a while because I used them so much in school and I felt like they just dried out really fast and really easily but I think that's because I had to use them constantly for class. And now that I've been out of school for a little while, I've come back to them, I've fallen back in love with them, and I use them quite a bit in my sketchbook, especially when I'm using things like watercolor. And I used to have more brands in this. I think I used to have the Stedler ones and a few others, but I've given them away over the years because, you know, after a while you figure out what your favorites are and you just kind of stick to those. Now. Oh, I do actually still have one of the Stedler pigment liners left. I used to have a whole set of these. And I think I gave them to my nephew because I didn't find myself using them enough. They're not bad. I think I may have a video on them. If so, I will link it in the description below. And I'll link any of the supplies that are related and any of the other videos that might be related to this video as well. But these were pretty good. I have the point zero point three. To be fair, like the 0.3 is basically my favorite size, I think, in any of these pens. And then I also have a couple of these calligraphy pens by Tombow. I think they have the hard plastic nib, which I love. I love that kind of nib. These are beautiful. I think I bought this in a two set, but I honestly don't know much about them. And it's all written in Japanese. So <laughs> if you are somebody who uses these pens a lot, let us know in the comments section below. Are these light fast? Are they waterproof? I have not used these enough. I think that I bought these shortly before I redid the studio. And I 
honestly, they were in their package right up until I got back into my studio. So I don't, I don't have a lot of information on them. I have played around with them a little bit and they're a lot of fun to work with. Then these ones are a recent set that I bought. These are the Molotow Black Liner Permanent Set Number 2. I do have a video of, on these recently. And I have been using these a lot in... I have a reverse coloring book that I keep in my living room. And while I'm watching TV at night, I just use these to draw lines in my reverse coloring book. But I have noticed with me working on them, and granted... These are, I'm not using these for heavy application. The nibs are wearing down pretty fast, at least on the ones I have. I don't know if any of you have experienced that, but you can probably kind of see how that's a little bit frayed. I did notice this when working in my reverse coloring book and that's really smooth paper. So that was something that I was like, eh, I'm not that big of a fan of that happening. But again, this is the four set. It has 0 0.3 millimeter. 0 0.5 millimeter, 0 0.7 millimeter, and one millimeter. So varying sizes, pretty good, but you know, they get the job done in the sketchbook. I just was a little bit leery of the fact that that nib is wearing down pretty fast. I'm not using them constantly. And again, it was on smooth paper. So, all right, the main pens that I've used for a long time is the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. And I have these in these different fine liners, and then I also have them in the brush pens, and we'll get to that later. Now, these are a water-based pen, so they do have the light fast ratings on them as opposed to some of the alcohol-based fine liners you can get out there. They say they're waterproof, but it takes a little bit longer for them to be waterproof, I have found. Like, you want to wait a while before you put watercolor over it if you don't want them smudging around in your watercolor, at least from my experience. So I tend to do my watercolor pieces first and then go over it with my fine lines so I don't have to worry about it. But if you're somebody who wants to go sketching and you sketch first and then use washes after, that's something to keep in mind. However, because they're India ink and water-based and pigment-based, they are archival as far as you don't have to worry about fading. Again, not the blackest black that you're going to get out there, but they layer pretty well. They get the job done. They're pretty much my go-to as far as far, uh, fine lining goes. And I have not noticed them running out as fast as these. Now, they aren't refillable. I don't believe that the... I don't believe the microns are refillable either. But I love them. And they're my favorite. Now, also in this grouping, in this little container here. I have some various metallic pens. So I have this Deco Color Premium Prime Premio. <laughs> Premium Prime Premio. Uh, this thing, it smells bad, but oh my gosh, it is super shimmery and shiny. A nice, beautiful gold. I love it to add a little bit of pizzazz to my artwork. It's got a strange kind of shaped nib to it, but it gets the job done. Oof, she's stinky though. Mm -mm. And then I have these infinity permanent markers that my husband got me. I don't know much about this company, but I love these, especially when I'm working in my sketchbook. Again, I don't have information on light fastness, but this is something that I like to just use to jazz up my artwork a little bit. And I have a full like set here that he had gotten me. This purple is beautiful. And then there's, you know, black, the typical silver and gold. But you kind of have an, a, like a nice little rainbow here. And I use these in a video as well. I have a video from a while back, super fun, where I use all my metallic art supplies. It's jazzy. It's funny. I did an illustration of my dog, Max. And uh, you got to check it out. So I will link that in the description as well. And then I have some of the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens metallic pens and there's two different like I don't understand I think it's just the way they the branding they kind of have two different branding because they have their metallics one that is branded like this but then they have these ones that you just buy along with your regular pit artist pens and I love them they're fun they're shiny they're not as shiny as this puppy but they're pretty good 
And then I also have some other brands in here as well. Uh, just like a metallic marker. What brand is this? <laughs> I've got, I think this is the same one. American Crafts. I have a couple of the silvers and a gold. Th a little bit of a thicker nib on them for larger applications. These ones might be starting to dry out a little bit. I don't think these are as opaque as some of the other ones that I have, but they're still pretty good. So that's what I have in this container. I mostly just have my fine liners and my metallics. Now let's move on to some various calligraphy pens that I have. Again, so I have a variety here and some of these, oh my gosh, I have had since I was a teenager. These ones here, I have had since I was probably like 15 years old. So I don't have all of them anymore because some of them dried up. I believe there was probably at some point a purple and maybe another color green. I don't know. I couldn't even tell you. I feel like these might have come from Michaels, but I really don't remember. They're by Marvy. And they're pigmented calligraphy. Quality memory bookmarker. So I think they're supposed to be archival. Let's see. Archival quality, smudge resistant. But it doesn't necessarily have any actual light fast information on them. But I can say I used to use these in my journal all the time when I was a teenager. And they definitely have held up over the years. Now, granted, it's not like my journal is laying open in the light. So I don't really know, but I used to write poetry with these all the time. I used to use them to embellish my artwork. They just have two different chisel nibs so that you can have a variety of size. Now, I am not somebody who is fantastic at calligraphy, but I feel like the shape of these makes it a little bit easier. And I do wish I still had the full set, but again, I had, I've had them for so long, it's kind of like a surprise that I have any of them anymore. And then these ones, I think I got in my early 20s. I used to have a lot more of these and they dried out as well. And these are the Elegant Writer. And they're Speedball. I didn't realize these are by Speedball. I don't really have much information on these either. But they have kind of that smaller chisel. So similar to this size at this end. And these work really well as well. I had a lot of fun with these just writing. Now it's like I could make, with the colors I have left, I could make some really bomb Christmas cards with them. <laughs> That's kind of one of the miscellaneous. Now let's take a look at some alcohol markers. I have here the pack of Ohuhu Honolulu 48 colors, and these are the pastel colors. I recently did a video on these. Now, Admittedly, I used to have a lot more alcohol markers. I used to have a huge collection of the Spectrum Noir markers, and I loved those, but I didn't find myself using them, especially once I learned about light fastness. I was really kind of disgruntled, honestly, and I had some of the Prismacolor markers as well. When I first started really getting into art as like a career and learning more about it on the internet, I learned about light fastness. And then I found out that alcohol markers aren't light fast. Now, you don't have to be a light fast snob like I am, but I like to sell my artwork. And I got so grumpy about it <laughs> that I stopped using alcohol markers for a while. I ended up donating them to my old college and I don't regret that at all. But now that I'm using my sketchbook more often, like I also had gone a long time without using my sketchbook. Now that I'm using my sketchbook more often, I'm like, oh, I really do like playing around with alcohol-based markers and in the sketchbook, they're not gonna fade as easily. So, and then I could just scan it and make prints and yada yada and now I have more alcohol markers. <laughs> So that's my little journey with alcohol markers. And I was actually looking into getting some of the Ohuhu when I decided I was going to start investing in alcohol-based markers again. And right around that time, Ohuhu reached out to me and asked if I would like them to send me some markers. And I said, actually, heck yes, because I was just about to buy some. So I do have a video about these up on the channel. These are their beautiful pastel markers. And I think I will be investing in some more from Ohuhu at some point. 
But for now, I've been having fun with these in my sketchbook. And I did specifically request to have the brush nib and the fine nib because I am not messing around with the chisel nib unless, of course, I am doing some sort of calligraphy or attempting calligraphy. I prefer, I much prefer a brush nib and a fine nib when I am doing my marker art. And so they were gracious enough to send me that kind of set. So I love these. I believe that Ohuhu now has refills and they they have so many different lines. So I will link them in the description below. And I should mention this specific video is not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. I'm not being paid by any of them to say nice things about their products. These are just the products I've accumulated over time. Let me know what sets of Ohuhu you really like. Because again, I'm looking for a another set to kind of supplement these with some regular colors in them. I'm a landscape girl. I'm a nature girl. So let me know what set you think would be best if I were to invest in more of these markers. Now, kind of along the lines of alcohol-based markers, I have here Sharpies. Lots and lots of Sharpies. These are the only markers that I really kept when I decided to switch to exclusively water-based markers. And so I have some of the fine liners and some of just the regular nib. Whoo, they stinky, stinky. I don't use these in my fine art, again, because they, <laughs> they're gonna fade, right? I'm not gonna create artwork that I plan to sell with these. And I don't even really use them much for coloring in my sketchbook anymore either because of the smell. They give me a headache. I am so relieved that there's so many different markers in the world now that we don't have to rely on these anymore. As a kid, when they were laying around the house, yes, I was using them. But now I use them more for planning and for obviously labeling things. And sometimes I'll use them to create some fun embellishments in my sketchbook. But I'm not going to be coloring large, you know areas with them just because of the smell. I feel like I'm being poisoned <laughs> when I use them long term. But I do love to have them around. They're kind of nostalgic for me. They have so many different uses. And of course, at times my husband is able to borrow them from me as well when he's doing stuff around the garage. So they're always good to have some around. Okay, now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of my collection here. And that is the water-based markers. Probably the most expensive and bougie markers that I own are these Crayolas. <laughs> Everybody has Crayolas. I've got some washable Crayolas here and I also have the ones that don't claim to be washable because I like an adventure. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. I think this is like what I have left from when I was a kid. There's not even a full set here. There's like two different sets and it's still not a complete set. But anyways, let's actually get to my favorite markers. And that is the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pens. I love these markers. I use these almost exclusively in the marker artwork that I plan to sell the original of. They are India ink based, which means they are also water based, pigment based, and they have light fast ratings on them. Now, life with these has been an adventure. As we all know, alcohol based markers are very popular because they are super easy to blend. And water based markers they're a little bit on the opposite side. They can be a little difficult to blend. So over the years, I have been exploring different surfaces to use these on. And I have settled on the encaustic board by Ampersand. It's one of my favorites to blend these on. And Yupo Paper by Legion also works really well. So if you're looking for a fun time with some water-based markers and you don't want to be struggling... I suggest trying different surfaces. That's going to make all the difference. Alcohol-based markers, they give you a little bit more time for blending. Water-based just kind of sinks into the paper a different way, and it gets a little bit difficult after a while. But I have managed once I have found the perfect surfaces for my working abilities anyway. So I have here the set of 60, and then I had like a set of like 30-something. I've had quite a few sets, actually. I have, those are like all my main colors. And then I have here 
like my earth tones, browns, blacks. These ones are my brush pens. You've already seen my fine liners, various whites. And then I also have a couple random, like, oh, Marvy. Apparently, I like this Marvy fellow. <laughs> Oh, man. But anyways, the Marvy Memories, I have like a couple of random markers that are white markers. I also have a chalk marker here. And then I think this one is the same as some of my metallic markers that I just showed you as well, the American Crafts. So I just kind of have those as an outlier in here. But I have the white. So you can see I have a ton of these. I've had quite a few sets my best friends went in on a set for me and my husband also went in on a different size set for me the same year. And so these are kind of my backup markers for when these ones run out. Now these are not at this time refillable, at least not through the company. The nibs are replaceable though. They're really cool because you can actually, well, let's not go with that fine liner there. I kept my colorful fine liners in with the colors that they go with, but these are mostly brush pens, but you can actually take that brush out and turn it around and then insert it back in the pen and the other side actually has another brush. So if the nib gets a little bit wonky, you can switch it around, which is really nice. But as of right now, they don't sell refillable inks, though I have heard some artists take their own ink and find a way to refill it. I haven't gotten to that point yet just because I have so many that I haven't really... I have a bad habit of not using up one marker before moving on to the next in the same color. I just grab the colors that I need for the piece I'm working on at the time. So I've never really run out of any one color, but I have heard people say that they are able to refill these if that is something that you are concerned about. So there's those water-based markers. And I also have in this marker case, which I love this marker case, I have more of the Faber-Castell markers. I have here on one side, I have their Pit Dual markers. And what these are is they're essentially the same things as the markers that I just showed you. Same exact kind of ink, but one side has a chunky brush nib and the other side has a nice fine line on it. So you can cover larger areas with these. And I absolutely love these. I use these with my brush pens all the time. Then I also have a few of their chunky markers as well in white. And one in their, I think they call this color cinnamon now. Let me see. Because they've changed the name of that color. It used to be, oh, beige red is what this color is now called. It used to be called light flesh and that's just obnoxious so I'm glad they changed the name on it so it's beige red now so I have a big one of those because I actually used to do a lot more portraiture and when I first started investing in my pit pens I was into portraits and I wanted to be able to cover large areas fast and then go over them with colored pencil which I haven't worked that way in a long time I might have to start doing that again now on the other side I have the Elbrecht Durr watercolor markers, and these are beautiful and fun to work with as well. And again, I have gone through my sets and I've weeded out the colors that I didn't find to be as light fast, and I donated those, although there was not a lot, I must admit. Faber-Castell is pretty good when it comes to light fastness. But this also has a chunky end to it. And then, this end is just kind of a fine nib, but it's not a tiny nib like the other end on the dual markers is. Now, this is a little bit different because while they're using the same pigments, the binders are a little bit different. So these can break down in water a lot more easily than their regular brush pens and their dual markers. But I love this case. I will link this case in the description below as well. I got it from Amazon. It's beautiful. It holds a ton of markers, as you can see, and it holds these chunky markers just fine. I ran out of room for these chunky markers in those cases that I've shown you previously. I have a couple outliers as far as watercolor markers go. I got this fun set from my husband one year in my stocking. It was either in my stocking or my Easter basket. Yes, I'm spoiled. He gets me a stocking for Christmas. Actually, he gets me like two or three stockings because this man, <laughs> oh, the 
this man can't be stopped. <laughs> I, I'm just way too spoiled. He usually gets me like two to three stockings. Um, anyway, I digress. So I'm pretty sure this came in a stocking and it actually came with a bookmark. It was a really fun set. So I made a bookmark out of it. And these are the Stedler brush pens and they are like a watercolor pen. They are beautiful. And I love this color scheme here because it's just so fun and springy. It's perfect for florals. And if you water the red down enough, then you can kind of get a pink color if you want, and you can get a lighter yellow if you water it down enough. And the green, you know me, I'm a green girl. I love to draw my leaves and my greenery. And so really, really love this set. I am thinking about looking into more of these because they're fun for the sketchbook. I don't have light fast information for these. I haven't really looked that far into it yet. If anybody has inf any information about them, let us know in the comments below so that we can all learn from one another. And then I have this here one off lonesome little Winsor & Newton watercolor marker. And does it have, it does have the pigment information on it and it says permanence A. I think I bought this from Michaels one time just to try it out. And I didn't end up investing in any more of them. And I think this was back before I was really Getting back into the watercolor products, I've really been into watercolors lately and the water-soluble pencils and the water-soluble markers. And so, but now that I have the Albrecht Durer, I don't know if I really feel the need to invest in any more of the Winsor Newton watercolor markers. So now we have gone over the fine liners. We have talked about the water-based markers. We've talked about the alcohol-based markers. What the heck do we have left? Well, acrylics, acrylic-based markers. And yep, I have some of those too. So we're gonna look at those. I have a variety here, folks. Now, right now, my top favorite is these refillable markers by Holbein. And of course, they have dark colors in them, so you can't see it. But it's the acrylic ink refillable marker. And I love their acrylic inks. And these markers are made to be used with those acrylic inks. You just refill them and bada bing, bada boom, you're off to the races. I love the nibs that they use on them. They're nice and strong and they do sell replaceable nibs for them. And you just buy these empty on Blick and you get whatever colors you want. So you're not messing around with running out. If you have a nice big bottle of their acrylic ink, then you can put it in there anytime. I like to use these for different details in artwork, but I also have a fun time with these in my sketchbook as well. And they got this big old boy right here. This one, she's a heifer. <laughs> she's a, it's a big one and I love it, but I think they have some that are even bigger than this. And so it's great for broad and graphic lines. I, I don't know. I just think it's really cool. And I already love their acrylic ink. So this works in my favor and I love the quality of them. Now, these ones are brush markers that I got from Lightwish. They had contacted me a while back and asked if I'd be interested in trying these. And I had actually been looking into the Ardex markers. I was looking into one of the brands that has put out the brush pen markers with a, for acrylic markers. I can't remember which one it was, but I was looking into them at that time because I really loved the unique concept of having an acrylic marker with a brush nib. And so when they reached out to me, I was like, heck yeah, I've been getting really picky about what brands I'm working with. And I don't typically work with like, I, I don't know. I've been picky about it, but I was already interested in a product like this. And so that's why I agreed to try them. And I was not disappointed. They work really well. They're pretty opaque. And I actually really love the, the brush nib. I don't know how long they're going to last, but they have lasted quite a while. I use them in my sketchbook quite a bit. And... They are double-ended, so you get a bunch of different colors to try, and I, I, I like them a lot. The colors are not, they don't match the caps very well. I have one that's reversed, first of all. Like, it looks like it's supposed to be neon, but then the neon is in a different spot. I don't know, but I digress. It, for what they're worth, like, they're, they're pretty inexpensive. They're a fun sketchbook play thing. And I love the fact that they're brush nib. And honestly, I wish these other companies that have archival products would get on board with a brush nib for their acrylic markers because it's kind of a game changer. And those, again, they don't have light fast ratings on them, but they're great for sketchbooks. 
Now, these are the markers. Not that one, that's something else. These are the markers that I am going to be apt to use along with my whole bind for artwork that I plan to sell because these ones do have light fast readings on them. And again, there's different nib sizes, but I don't think as of right now, any of these companies, I have the Liquitex here. I have the Pebio or PBO. I don't know how to say that. I have the Montana, which I love the Montana. They all have light fast ratings on them. They have different size nibs, but to my knowledge, none of them have a brush nib yet. I'll have to look into that more because I would love that if any of these companies came out with a brush nib. And again, I have them color coded. I started off with the Liquitex professional markers because Again, they have the light fast ratings on them. They also have the pigment information on them. I know Liquitex is a good brand. I use the Liquitex Basics. I've had some of their other paints as well. Now they call this their fine nib. I'm not too happy about the fact that it's actually a chisel nib. I wish that they actually, when I bought them, I wish that they had a an actual fine nib, but I don't know if they've expanded their line or not because I haven't gone through these enough to have to you know, like replace them or anything. And to my knowledge, they don't necessarily sell refills for these, but I think it'd be fairly easy to just pull the nib out or even take this apart and refill it with some sort of acrylic ink. So inherently, I think most of these markers are technically refillable. If you want to get a little bit adventurous about it and, you know, put some ingenuity into it and just take it upon yourself. And again, don't quote me on that because some of these brands might be refillable. I think, I feel like Montana might actually be, is it Montana I'm thinking of? I think they might be refillable because they have all kinds of different cool products. And I really love these because they can be so graphic and a lot of them are nice and opaque. A few of them are a little watery, like this one. Browns are hard to get an opaque color with, but these... Like this one has never really cut it for me. So it really depends on the color. I was just not as pleased. This is one of the Pebio or PBO or however the heck that said. I also have a Molotow one for all acrylic marker and I love this one. So when I'm working with my acrylic markers, I work with these a lot in the sketchbook. But I do like to add embellishments and some details to my acrylic artwork that I plan to sell as well. And these are great though. This is great for when I'm trying to work in the sketchbook and I want to have some outlining, but I want it to still be acrylic. I love this pen. It's also great for signing artwork too. So if you're somebody who has a really hard time signing your artwork that you've created with acrylics, an acrylic marker might be a good place for you to go. You don't want to sign with something like a Sharpie because Sharpie will fade over time. You don't want to put all kinds of work into an artwork and then have it hang on the wall and then your signature fade off it. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I've been there. And so if you're working with acrylics, this is a great way to have a nice archival way to sign your artwork and have it still be in the same medium that you used. I have a couple metallics. So what, ooh, why is this? This just goes to show that I use my Chinese white, my Dermot Drawn Chinese white in everything that I do because this is down in here with my acrylic markers. Oh my golly. Okay. So the last category that I have with my markers is oil-based markers. Now, to me, these are very similar to my acrylic markers. They have a little bit of a smell to them, but not too bad. These ones are by Imuki, and these are the only ones that I really have on hand. These scallywags, <laughs> these will write, I, I swear you could probably do designs on your car with them. They will write on anything. I was so impressed with these. They reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to try it out, and I said, why the heck not? I was feeling like really crafty that day. Again, not something that I use in my fine art, but when I'm crafting, heck yes. These these bulldoze everything. So I started off with the 12 set that they sent me. And then I also ended up buying myself their 24 set, or sorry, their 20 set. I love them so much. I, I just can't get over it because 
I don't do a lot of crafting on the channel necessarily, but in my, in my spare time, not that I have much, I do like to craft and I love playing on different materials, painting on rocks, things like that. And these work really well for that. And so I couldn't resist getting more and having more colors. As you can see, I've only opened a few of these so far because I have most of the colors. I couldn't find my white at one point, so I opened that one. And I love them so much that I even told my crafty sister about them. She got some too. So I definitely recommend these for crafty applications. I also love these for when I'm doing acrylic pouring. If I want to do any sort of detail, because I went through a phase with acrylic pouring where I was making a lot of different coasters and stuff for my friends and family. These draw really well over acrylic pouring. So if I wanted to do an acrylic pouring background and then draw something fun on top, these work really well for that. Whereas I've found acrylic markers, I have a harder time with drawing over the acrylic pouring because the acrylic pouring is so glossy. These work really well for that application. Okay, so that's my collection. Not as bad, right? This one did not take nearly as long as the colored pencil and pastels. I think now that I'm done with this shelf, because my colored pencils and my pastels and my markers were all on the same shelf, I'm going to start moving around the room. I think I might get into my graphite next, maybe in a few weeks. Let me know what you would like to see next. Graphite or charcoal, maybe I'll do that together. Anyway, that's it. These are all my fun goodies in this category. I will see you real soon. All right, folks. That was it. That was my marker collection. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite kind of marker is. Are you a alcohol-based person who loves the joy of being able to blend those puppies? Or are you a sucker for punishment like me where you like the challenge of having to try to blend water-based markers? Or maybe you just like acrylic markers. Let us know in the comments below what brand marker you like, what kind of marker you like, and let us share in our love for art supplies in the comments section because that's what I love about this community. Okay, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and watch this one next if you'd like to continue on this little adventure with us. And also feel free to check out this video from one of my pals. I think you'll really enjoy it. I will see you next week. You have a fantastic day. Bye.